Celebrity Influence on Kamala Harris's Presidential Campaign, a Look at Cultural Impact and Social Advocacy. The 2020 presidential election in the United States was a historic and tumultuous time, defined by a global pandemic, economic uncertainty, and social movements for equality and justice. In this context, endorsements from influential cultural figures had a profound impact, none more so than those supporting Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Icons like Beyonce, Willie Nelson, Eminem, Bruce Springsteen, Taylor Swift, and Usher used their platforms to encourage voting and highlight the values aligned with Harris's campaign. Together, they added cultural weight and energy to the election, bringing forward a unifying message during a divisive time. Beyonce, a voice for reproductive freedom and women's rights. Beyoncé's endorsement of Kamala Harris was significant because of her established role as an advocate for women's rights, particularly reproductive freedom. Throughout her career, Beyoncé has used her music, philanthropic efforts, and personal statements to champion women's empowerment, personal autonomy, and reproductive health. Her support for Harris, a candidate equally committed to these values, resonated deeply with her fans, encouraging them to consider reproductive rights as essential to the fight for equality and justice. In a year when these rights faced frequent political challenges, Beyoncé's endorsement reminded millions of the importance of electing leaders who uphold these freedoms. Willie Nelson, a country legend bridging cultural divides. Willie Nelson's support for Kamala Harris underscored her campaign's appeal beyond urban and liberal circles. As a country music legend with fans across the political spectrum, Nelson's endorsement added credibility and extended Harris's message of inclusivity to rural communities and older generations. Known for his activism in environmental protection, rural health care, and veterans' rights, Nelson emphasized the values Harris sought to represent. His advocacy for a unified approach to social justice helped bridge cultural divides, resonating with rural communities that may not traditionally lean liberal but were drawn to Harris's messages of compassion and equity. Eminem, Advocacy Through Music and Activism Eminem's endorsement of Kamala Harris resonated strongly with young voters and marginalized community. I'm not here as a celebrity, I'm not here as a politician. I'm here as a mother," Beyoncé said at a Houston rally for Kamala Harris presidential campaign Friday night. Imagine our daughters growing up seeing what's possible with no ceilings, no limitations, she continued. We must vote, and we need you. At the end, Beyoncé who was joined on stage by her Destiny's Child bandmate Kelly Rowland introduced Harris as she walked on stage. Beyoncé did not perform unlike in 2016, when she performed at a presidential campaign rally for Hillary Clinton in Cleveland. Houston is Beyoncé's hometown, and Harris' presidential campaign has taken on Beyoncé's 2016 track Freedom, a cut from her landmark 2016 album Lemonade, as its anthem. With the packed arena crowd remaining noisy as she spoke, disturbances broke out, leaving Harris trying to keep command of her event. You know what, the beauty of our campaign is we're fighting for democracy," Harris said, following one of the protesters, who was shouted down by her crowd. I'm not here as a celebrity. I'm not here as a politician. I'm here as a mother. A mother who cares deeply about the world my children and all of our children live in. A world where we have the freedom to control our bodies. A world where we're not divided. Our past, our present, our future merge to meet us here. Imagine our daughters growing up seeing what's possible with no ceilings, no limitations, Imagine our grandmothers, imagine what they feel right now, those who have lived to see this historic day.
elected officials and community leaders, I thank you all. I thank you. Because you all know, Texas is home to one of the most restrictive abortion bans in our country. In Texas, abortion is banned from the moment of conception. You know what? You know what? Just send them to that small rally down the street. It'll be fine. People don't have a great sense of direction, but that's okay. We'll show them the way. We'll show them the way. Because we know what's at stake, and we will not be silenced. We know what's happening here in Texas. Doctors and nurses could go to prison for life simply for providing reproductive care. Think about that. Life in prison for health care providers for doing what they think is in their patient's best interest. You know what? The beauty of our campaign is we're fighting for democracy. Bruce Springsteen and Barack Obama lent their star power to Kamala Harris's quest for the presidency on Thursday, as the vice president implored Georgia voters to consider the brutally serious consequences if Donald Trump wins a second term in the White House. Harris echoed that message in her speech, attacking Trump by comparing him to the predators, fraudsters and repeat offenders she prosecuted early in her career and arguing she is focused on Americans while her Republican opponent is focused on himself. I took them on and I won, Harris said. Well, Georgia, in 12 days, it's Donald Trump's turn. It's his turn. It's either Donald Trump in there stewing over his enemies list, or me working for you, checking off my to-do list, she added, speaking of the work either would do in the Oval Office. You have the power to make that decision. Someone who says we should terminate the Constitution of the United States of America should never again stand behind the seal of the President of the United States of America, Harris said. Never again. Thursday's event is the first in the campaign's When We Vote We Win concert series that aims to encourage Harris supporters to vote before Election Day. It was over 17 years ago when I took a trip to Springfield, Illinois. It was a cold February day. And I went there to support this brilliant young senator who was running for president of the United States. And millions of Americans were energized and inspired, not only by Barack Obama's message, but by how he leads, seeking to unite rather than separate us. And that is why in 2007, 2007, I went New Year's Eve to Iowa to knock on doors in the snow. And all these years later, Barack Obama, I say to you, your friendship and your faith in me and in our campaign means the world. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. So Atlanta, before I was Vice President of the United States, before I was a United States Senator, 
and before that, a two-term attorney general for the state of California. And before that, a district attorney and a courtroom prosecutor. And in those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds, predators, fraudsters, and repeat offenders. I took them on, and I won. Well, Georgia, in 12 days, it's Donald Trump's turn. And he who has called for the, quote, termination of the Constitution of the United States. Let us be very clear. Someone who suggests we should terminate the Constitution of the United States of America should never again stand behind the seal of the President of the United States of America. Never again. Never again. There is a huge contrast in this election. Just imagine Imagine the Oval Office in three months. Picture it in your mind. It is either. So, but there's a choice that everybody has. So let's imagine it for a moment. It's either Donald Trump in there stewing, stewing over his enemies list, or me working for you, checking off my to